My name is Heather, and today I'm going to show you how to use your Wacom tablet with Affinity Photo to make clip art that you can sell online. I have my Wacom One display tablet here. And by the way, thank you Wacom for sending me this tablet and for sponsoring this video. I have this all hooked up to my MacBook Pro. And if you want instructions on how to do that, you can check out my unboxing and setup video. This is just one video in my digital assets series that I'm creating with Wacom to show you how you can use your tablet with the Affinity software to create digital assets to sell online. Today, we're going to focus on creating clip art to sell online. There are a lot of different websites that you can sell your clip art online and you can sell it on multiple websites or you can just pick one. Go ahead and research them and see which ones that you like the best. Some of the popular websites for selling clip art online are Etsy, Creative Market, Creative Fabrica, Envato Elements, Shutterstock. Those are some of the most popular ones. So I would recommend to go through and try them and see which ones you like and which ones work for you. When creating clip art to sell online, you wanna make it as useful as possible for people that are going to use it to create some kind of graphic design. This could mean something small like a business card or it could mean something bigger like an invitation or a flyer. In order to do that, you wanna make the elements pretty big so that they could be used for as big of a project as possible. I recommend creating a sheet that is 16 by 20 inches and 300 dpi which is the standard high resolution dpi for printing and you can have your elements laid out on that sheet and then your bigger elements are probably going to be about half the size of that sheet so maybe like eight to ten inches high and that would be good because it can be used for a poster or anything really big and it's going to be big enough I also recommend creating some bigger elements and then also some smaller elements that can be used for design. You can kind of get an idea of what's out there if you search the internet and search some of those websites that I mentioned. But basically, you're going to create some main elements that can be the main subject of the clip art. And then you're gonna make some smaller, more decorative elements like you know, flowers, leaves, or whatever kind of ties in with the design. But it can be used to create like borders or used for little bullet points or dividers, any kind of things like that. Just cute little elements that the graphic designer can use in their layout. And this will help you to get more sales for your clip art because it's going to be more useful in the graphic design layout. There are a lot of different ways that you can get ideas for creating your clip art. One way is to think of what holidays are coming up and do that kind of theme, or you can just base it around a general theme like a kind of animal, a kind of hobby, or just any kind of subject that you can think of. For our project today, I'm going to think of an upcoming holiday, which is Mother's Day. I do find that there are a lot of animals with their babies in like woodland animals and some of the more popular ones. So I'm going to do a less popular animal and I'm gonna do a toucan because I think toucans are so cute. So I'm gonna do a mama toucan and her baby. And then I also wanna think of other elements that I want to include. So that can be things that can build a scene with the animals, or like I said before, things that can be used as graphic design elements. So I'll probably include some leaves and foliage, and then I'll also include some little like small insects that can be used in different places, and then maybe a vine that can be used for like a divider. So those are some of my ideas of things that I wanna include. And I'm going to start with my sketch. I have Affinity Photo pulled up here. And I'm just going to create a new file. And I'm going to make it 16 by 20 inches and 300 dpi. So you can either go in here and you can actually just type out the inches. So you can do 20 inches. And then it's going to convert that to pixels anyways. So the number of pixels it would be is 6,000 by 4,800 pixels. 
So I'll just have that in there and then 300 DPI. For the color, I can just go with RGB since it's going to be sold on a computer. So the user is going to be seeing it in RGB anyways. And then if they're using it for print, they can go ahead and convert it. I'm going to click create. Here is my blank document. And now I just want to start by sketching out some of my ideas. So I'm going to go to the brushes panel, which I have over here on the right. And underneath this list here, we have all kinds of different brushes. So for sketching, I'm going to pick the pencil brush. There's all these different pencils. So I'll just grab one here and you can kind of experiment and see which ones you like the best. And then I'm going to make sure I have the brush tool selected over here from the toolbar and I can sketch. Oh, and one other thing that I did want to show you is setting your options on your pen for your Wacom. If we open up our Wacom options, it's probably different on the PC, so you'll just have to find it. But on the Mac, you can go to System Preferences, and then you're going to find Wacom Tablet. Over here, where it shows the pen, you have these options here for what you want the button to be. I'm going to go to on-screen shortcuts and do express menu. If I do that, then if I click on the button, it's going to bring up undo and redo and then a couple of other options. So that's what I like to have it on. And you can kind of look at what's there, look at the options and see if there's anything that you like better for your pen button. So I'll close that. And back to Affinity Photo, I'm going to start by just sketching out my toucan and her baby. So I'll just start with a nice body here and a head. I want my baby to be just kind of cuddled in with the mama. And I'll add a beak here. And the baby's beak. There's a little tail. And then I'll do the mama's tail her wing and I'll give the baby a wing and then I can have them on like a little branch here and now that I have this very rough sketch I can set this layer on a lower opacity and then just trace over it to have a more definitive sketch so I'm going to go over to my layers panel and with this layer selected I'm going to go to opacity and I'll just bring that down so it's nice and light. And then I'm going to create a new layer by clicking the new layer icon down here, add pixel layer. And I'm also just going to lock the layer down here. So I'll click the lock and then that way I don't accidentally draw on it. And I'm going to select the layer above it. And now I'll do a more definitive sketch of my toucans. And if you ever want to erase, we have the eraser tool, just a couple down from the pencil tool. So I can click on that and then I can just erase if I have any mistakes here. Now that I have that done, I can delete the original sketch layer. So I'll just click on that in my layers panel and I'll click the delete button. And now we can add some more elements into this drawing. One of the things I wanted to add were some big leaves so that when someone uses this for graphic design, they can have them kind of coming in on the sides or however they want to use it. So I'll go ahead and make some big leaves. And if I was making this like as a design, I would maybe just have the leaf coming in. But since I'm creating this for a graphic designer, I want it to be as useful as possible. So I'm going to give them the entire leaf and I'm going to start with the end of the leaf up here and I'm going to have the entire leaf here. I'll make a couple of different ones so that they have some variety and they could use like a couple of different ones together. And I'll also add a couple leaves onto my branch here. Let's do some flowers so that we have some extra little elements that they can use within their design. I'm going to make some flowers that look kind of tropical here, like maybe like a hibiscus or something. Also, maybe a couple little insects. So I'll do some butterflies. Lastly, I like to do something that can kind of be used as like a border or a divider. So I'll do a vine. The next thing is I want these elements to be as big as possible. 
so that they can be the most useful to the designer. So I'm going to grab my lasso tool here. And now that I know I have some extra space in the layout, I can grab some of these and make them bigger. So I can grab my butterflies and I will grab my select tool and then I'll just make them bigger. And same with the flowers. Now that we have our whole layout here, we can start doing the fun part, which is coloring in. With the layer that we were drawing on, let's go ahead and rename that. So I'm gonna double click on the name and I'm just gonna name it Sketch. And then I'm going to turn down the opacity and then I'm gonna set it to multiply. So that way when I draw underneath it, I'll be able to still see it. So I'm gonna go over here and pick multiply. Now let's create a new pixel layer. So I'll click on this new pixel layer icon and I'm going to bring it underneath the sketch layer. I can double click on it and name it art. And now on our art layer, we can start coloring in. If we go over to our brushes panel, click on the drop down and there's a lot of different brushes here that are really nice. So you can kind of experiment with those and see which ones that you like the best because it'll depend on your style of art. So there's watercolor brushes if you like that kind of a look and there's acrylic brushes and gouache. There's a lot of really good brushes. I do like the gouache ones a lot because they have some really good blending. If you go through here and try out some different brushes, I'm going to go over here, double click on this color circle right here and i'm just going to pick a different color so let's say i pick a green make sure we have the brush tool selected and i'm going to test this brush if we like this brush you can actually grab it and pull it up to the top and then that way you can remember which ones that you really liked because it can definitely be hard to kind of keep track of which ones you liked and which ones you didn't I'm going to start by just blocking out the colors for my clip art, and then I'll add the shading after that. After you outline an area, if you want to fill it in, you can just grab your paint bucket tool and click and then it'll fill it in. And if you get a little bit of kind of glowy around the edges, you can mess around with the tolerance up here and bring it up or down. And you can also just try clicking on that outer edge and then it'll usually fill the rest of it in. Now I have all of the color blocking done and now I can start doing the shading. To do the shading, I'm going to want to add a new layer and have that as my shading layer just to make it easier. And if I want to kind of undo something that I did, it's on a separate layer. It's easy to just get rid of. So I'm going to create a new pixel layer and I'm going to take this layer and grab it and I'm going to click and drag and drop it on top of my art layer. Now, if we open up the art layer, it's inside of it. When we do that, it creates a clipping mask. So anything that we color on that layer will be restricted to only where there are colored pixels on the art layer. So when we color on the layer, as you can see, you can like go around the edges and it'll only go on the edges and you'll always stay within the lines. If you want to make your brush bigger, which I like to do for the initial shading to just get some of those bigger blocks of darks and lights, just go up to the little properties strip at the top and then you can change the width up here and you can also make the opacity a little bit lower too which i also like for some of the initial shading just so that it's not quite so dark all at once in the beginning i'm just going to go ahead and start doing all of my shading We can also turn off our sketch layer so that we can see, you know, what we have so far on our color layer. 
So we can just click on that little solid dot there and that turns it off.
Now I'm all done drawing my clip art collection. So now that we're done with that, we can go ahead and export. So the first thing we're going to do is just export this whole thing as one image. And we want to make sure that we have transparency in the background so that it's just easier for the designer to overlay elements on top of each other. So we're going to go to document transparent background and then now you can see the background is transparent. So now we can save this out as a PNG. So we're going to go to file export and up here we're going to pick PNG and just keep it at the original size we had it at. And then for the area we can do whole document and we'll do export. You can make a new folder for this. We'll save it. Now we can export each individual element as its own file just to make it easier for the designer that's using it. To do that, I like to open up that exported PNG so we're not dealing with all our layers that we have in this file. So let's go File, Open, and we're going to grab the PNG that we made, toucan.png, which has everything. So as you can see, all we have here is a background layer. And what we're going to want to do is put each item on its own layer, and then we'll be able to export those really easily. So I'm going to grab my lasso tool, and I'm just going to grab the butterfly, and I'm going to do edit, cut, and then edit, paste. And then I'll go back down to my background layer, and I'll grab the yellow butterfly, and cut and paste. And I'm just going to do that for each of the elements in my design. Now if we look over in our layers panel we can see that each element is on its own layer and you can also hide and show them so you can kind of like see what the different pieces are. And now we can just go to each of these layers and we're going to export it. So I'm going to go file, export, and I'll do selection only, export. And then you can name it whatever you want to name it. So like this one, I'll do purple butterfly. Now that we have all of our layers exported, if we go into our folder, then we'll see all of our separate pieces. And then also the one that has everything combined. Once we have all of these files here, we're just going to select everything. And then you can right click on them or control click on the Mac. And we're just going to do compress or on a Windows, you would zip the files. And then now we have this little archive.zip. And then we can name it to like Toucan Clip Art. And there we go. Now we're done. That's the file that we would put up online to sell. I hope this was helpful and I hope it gets you started in selling your own digital assets online. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, or as always, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Stay tuned for the next video in this series where I'll show you how to create a sticker sheet that you can use with the Cricut, and you can also upload it online and sell it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.